Hello, welcome back. Um, if you have not gotten your financial calculator, you may want to pause the video and go get your cal financial calculator with you now so that we can go over this together. So to start this, uh, so for you, I just want to go over your calculator briefly. And as I mentioned in going over the syllabus, uh, we'll use the Texas Instrument um, calculator in all the calculations. So if you take a look at the um, Texas Instru Instrument calculator, um, the finance, the time value of money registers are located in the center of the calculator. So this line right here that is highlighted, again, your calculator may have a different color, but if you look carefully, the same register should be on your calculator as well. So this five register here in the center of your calculator is related to the time value of money. So the first, so each one of those um, corresponds to what we'll be using in this chapter. Uh, so one of the ones is, the abbreviation is FV, and it stands for future value, PV stands for present value and so forth. So it's useful to, um, you'll probably be very familiar with this by the end of this chapter, if not by the end of the next chapter. So FV stands for future value, PV stands for present value, and I'll go over how to set this um, interest. This is the period interest rate. So this is the interest per period. So this is a couple of things to remind, uh, important reminder. Uh, one is that interest is entered as a percent, not as a decimal. So for example, if the interest rate is uh, say 5% per year, you enter this as the number five and not 5%. So you enter just 5 um, because it recognizes the entry as a percentage, not a decimal. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned is important is set this register to 1. So I'm going to go over how to do that. So the period per year p slash y is a second function. So to access a second function on your calculator, you pr first have to press the second key. So it shows on the display on your calculator a second, and then press this register right here. You see p slash y is 1. If this is what you see in your calculator, you're all set. If this is not, oftentimes this may be set to 12. If that's the case, just press the number 1. Again, you have to press the enter key, which is right here, and it is all set. And N stands for the number of period. And then the last thing that is very important is at the end of each problem, you need to clear this register. And to clear those register is different than just pressing the, key, the clear key. You have to do clear TVM. So let me demonstrate where that is. So let, if you press clear, which is most of you would do, you press the clear button here, you reset this number to zero. However, that does not clear the numbers that you have entered into the financial registry or the TVM registry. To do that, you have to clear TVM, which is this function here. To access clear TVM, you first start with second function and then press this register. And now all the value in the time value of money register will be clear. So once more, clearing this does not work. You need to do clear TVM, which requires a second function first. Make sure that you see the display on your, on your calculator and then press this um, register here. Lastly, when you use the financial uh, functions or the TVM function on your calculator, it makes an inflow versus outflow assumption. What that means is that your calculator assumes that you cannot have your cake and eat it. So if you enter a number as a positive number on, on an info as your, as your future uh, present value, so let's say you receive money today, so you receive a thousand dollars today, that since this is present value, that's money to you receive today. This is oftentimes looked at as a loan problem in 
the time value of money problem. So we receive the money today, that means you have to pay it back in the future. So the future will be an outflow. So let's say you borrow this for a year and you pay 5% in interest, you, your outflow will be $1,050. So that's the inflow versus the outflow assumption. Oftentimes, if you enter the present value as an inflow, for example, then the assumption is that this is an, uh, an outflow, this is an investment problem. So let's say I put away $1,000. So I put this in the bank and I want to save this money for two years, for example. This is an investment problem. And after you put it in the bank for two years, you receive some money back in the future. So you get some money back in the future. So the future value is a positive or an inflow, whereas the present value is negative, is an outflow because you're putting money, you're taking money out of your wallet today and you're getting money back into your wallet in the future. Okay, so to apply what we have just talked about, let's go over an example. Let's say that your ancestor deposited $10 at 5.5% 200 years ago. How much would that investment be worth today? So if you are drawing a timeline for this problem, this is a very long timeline, as you can see. So you started long, long time ago. So over 200 years. So I just run that. So over 200 years, and you put aside, so you invest, so you put aside $10. So the $10 is negative $10. You earn 5.5%. So your interest rate is 5.5% over a 200 year period. So these are all the information that we have. So when you read a word problem, you can help organize the information by transferring the numbers to a timeline. Now, if you're using a formula, remember that the formula is, uh, is equal to the future value is equal to the present value. So we start with $10 and we will invest that at one plus 5.5%. So notice that when I'm using the formula, I'm converting the, per the percentage to a decimal place. But this time we're going to waste it to 200 years. And we can find out how much money we have at the end of 200 years. So go ahead and do that calculation. So you can pause this video while you're doing the calculation. So you, not surprisingly, you should see that you get $447,189. So this is something you have learned before. Today, we're, in this video, we're going to go over how to use your financial calculator. So in your financial calculator, you are solving for, oops, so you're finding the future value. So this is useful. So the first thing you want to do is define what you're looking for. So we are asked to find the future value. In order to solve for the future value, you need to know the other um, elements. So we know we need to have the present value. And this is very important when you look at the present value to remember that we need, we need to make the inflow versus outflow assumption. So in here, we are investing $10, so that becomes an, an outflow today, $10. Um, we invest this at an interest rate. So this is the interest register on your calculator at 5.5%. So again, this is enter as a percentage. So we just enter 5.5. And then we will invest this for a total of 200 years. Since we are finding the future value, the next thing we'll do is we'll have to compute the future value. So now let's take a look using the calculator to see how we will solve this. So we have all the information we need. So a good habit would be to do a second function, clear TVM to make sure that we are starting with a, um, a new set of register. Um, so $10, so that would be 10. 
To change the sign as an outflow, we use the plus negative sign. So that becomes minus $10. So you cannot do minus 10, but you do 10 and then change the sign. This goes in as present value. Notice that it is registered by your calculator. 5.5 .5 is our interest. And 200 years is our investment horizon. OK. So that's N, our investment horizon. So you can look and make sure that everything is entered correctly. Lastly, we want to compute future value. So compute future value. And this is our answer. Not surprisingly, this is exactly the same answer that you will get um, using the formula. So using the calculator is just another way that will allow you to, um, to solve the problem. So here I'm taking a minute to talk about um, your formula sheet. So we said about using your formula sheet to help you uh, in future exams and problems. So if you're solving this problem, if you were to use your formula sheet, how would that look like? So on your formula sheet, you can write down the formula, which says that future value is equal to present value times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the time period. And you'll need to know all the definitions of that. Alternatively, you can also use write down steps on the calculator. You can say to find the future to find the future value, you will need to enter present value. You can even write down negative number and then interest and then time period, and then you will compute future value. So either of this or both can go onto your formula sheet to help you prepare for the exam in the future. To give us more practice on what we what you have learned before, so let's let's go also take the problem all the way to the end, and that is to compute the um, compound interest. So what is the effect of compounding? So first, let us compute the simple interest. So if the interest rate is 5.5% at $10 as our original investment for 200 years, our total simple interest will be $110. And we add that back to our original investment of $10, we would have accumulated a total of $120 had we invested using simple interest. However, since we were able to earn compound interest, our ending balance was $447,189.84. So the difference between the ending value with compound interest and the ending value with simple interest is the effect of compounding. And that's what we call compound interest. So the difference in this case is significant, obviously, because we are investing for 200 years. So here is a graph showing the impact of both interest rate and investment horizon. So an interest rate of 0%, if you don't earn any interest, of course, there's no impact on compounding. No matter how long you leave the money in the bank, if you earn no interest, you start with $1,000, you end with $1,000. However, the higher the interest, the more your money will grow. That's just common sense. And the other is the longer you invest your money, Again, the longer the investment horizon, the more your money will grow. And more importantly, notice the effect of compounding. The higher the interest rate and the longer the investment horizon, the greater the compounding effect. So the higher the interest, the longer the compounding, uh, the investment horizon, the greater the impact of compounding. So there's a positive relationship between future value and interest rate and investment horizon. So the higher the, the higher the interest rate, the larger the future value, the longer the investment horizon, the larger the future value. So here is um, one more example to help you um, practice your knowledge. So 
So go ahead and pause the video and do a check to see if you get the same answer also both using the financial calculator and the formula. Good luck. This ends um, future value. In our next video, we'll continue on with present value.